Studio Classroom is Record Studio Classroom Welcome to Studio Classroom on the air, where your English will improve. My name is Gabe. All right, without opening your magazines, here's a little quiz for you. There's a word for everything in English. What's the English word that refers to the art of hat making? Do you know? It's in our title. But, <laughs> yes, without your magazine open, friends, I believe you know the word is millinery. We're learning about the art of millinery today. Yesterday we learned that the name came from the name of the city Milan. But has hat making or millinery been popular ever since? Today we'll take a further look at the history of millinery and we'll find the answer to this question. How did World War II affect women who wore hats? How did World War II affect women who wore hats? Let's find the answer together. The Art of Millinery During the middle of the 20th century, millinery began to fade from importance. This is partly because of historical events. During World War II, many women began to work, and fancy hats got in their way. Women ceased spending money on hats, preferring to focus on clothes and hairstyles. Yet, women still wear elaborate hats at special events today. At horse races like America's Kentucky Derby, and Britain's Ascot, fabulous hats grace the heads of fashion-conscious women. And in Britain, hats frequently appear at church services and weddings. Everyone, welcome to Language Lab. 首先，我们看 cease 这个动词。Cease 是指停止或终止。例如 ，the company ceased their overseas expansion due to financial difficulties. 这家公司由于财务困难而停止了国外的拓展。或者是 ，both countries agreed to cease their military activities near the border. 两国都同意停止双方边界附近的军事活动。Cease 后面也可以加上不定词 to， 再加上原形动词。例如 ，This actor never ceases to amaze audiences with her multifaceted talents. 这位演员不停地以她多方面的才华让观众感到惊叹。接下来我们看的是 elaborate 这个形容词。Elaborate 是指精致的，或者是经过精心计划或设计的。注意，当它当形容词的时候 ，r 后面的 a 是发短音的。念成 elaborate， 例如 the finale of the fashion show is an elaborate wedding gown。这场时装秀的压轴是一件设计繁复精致的婚纱。elaborate 也可以当动词，这个时候 r 后面的 a 就要发发长音的 a 的音，念成 elaborate， 意思是详细说明或阐述。例如 the chief refused to elaborate on the case because many details are confidential。警察局长拒绝对这个案子做进一步说明，因为许多的细节都需要保密。All right, so Rebecca,、yes. here's、yes. a here's a little joke for you. Oh, I love jokes.、All、Hopefully,、right. it's funny so I can laugh. <laughs> well, just just laugh anyway. Okay. What did the hat say to the tie? What did the hat say to the tie? Wear me. No, no, no. He he says he said, you just hang around here. I'll go on ahead. Get、uh -huh. it ahead. Is this when I laugh? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> That's 
That's so funny. All right. Shush. I didn't get uh, it. Okay. <laughs> Going on ahead. Get oh, ahead. Got ahead goes. it. Okay. Thanks for laughing anyway, Rebecca. <laughs> that was a good joke. Good job, Gabe. <sighs> well, friends, let's continue learning about millinery. And now the history. We read here, during the middle of the 20th century, millinery began to fade from importance. Now, let's talk about that phrase. To fade from something, that fade from, mm -hmm. fading from importance, that means it's becoming less and less important. If it fades, it's gradually disappearing. That's right. Now, this reminds me of airplanes. I love watching airplanes take off. And as they continue to fly forward, they begin to fade from your view. That's true. Do you know why? Well, because they're flying away. <laughs> Was that a joke? No, it's the truth. <laughs> well, come on. Okay. You're right about that. They're <laughs> flying away. They're fading from view. They're fading into the distance. There are a couple of phrases we use that word fade with, right? If you're using, if you're playing music, sometimes a song will just fade out, right? It doesn't just stop. It fades out. It gradually grows softer. So friends, we're learning about how millinery began to fade from importance. It used to be really important, but it gradually got less and less. That's right. And of course, our lesson says, this is partly because of historical events. During World War II, many women began to work and fancy hats got in their way. Well, that's true. If you're trying to, to do a job and you're wearing this big fancy hat, that that hat could prevent you from doing your job well. Well, here's a phrase that mm -hmm. will not get in the way of your English learning today, friends. It'll actually help you because it's a great phrase to know, and that is to get in one's way because fancy hats got in their way. So that means they were a hindrance when these women were trying to work, okay? So in Chinese, you might say, so these women were trying to work and the hats, they were just kind of really big. Right. They got in the way. Exactly. Now here's another way that you can use this phrase. Mm -hmm. Now friends, don't take this the wrong way. Gabe, don't take this the wrong way either. I'll try not to. I know small dogs are really, really, really cute, but sometimes they might get in the way because I'm walking and, and they like to be right at my feet and then I feel like I'm going to trip. Yes. Small dogs always get in the way. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Uh, don't take that the wrong way, friends. I, I also love small dogs sometimes. Well, hats could get in the way. What else gets in the way? Friends, maybe you could think of another, uh, something else that gets in the way when you're trying to work. What gets in the way? Hmm. Well, uh, let's continue on. Women seized spending money on hat, preferring to focus on clothes and hairstyles. Well, that's a good thing to focus on. I guess they probably bought a lot more clothes and changed their hairstyles quite regularly, perhaps. Right, and we read on here uh, about some women who like to still wear hats at different races, right? Here in this picture, you see some women at Britain's Ascot. We read, yet women still wear elaborate hats at special events today. At horse races like America's Kentucky Derby and Britain's Ascot, fabulous hats grace the heads of fashion-conscious women. And you see that word grace there. In our lesson, this means to give beauty or elegance or charm to something. That's right. Now, oftentimes when I hear this word, one way that I like to use it is, well, thank you so much for attending today. You graced us with your presence. I love that phrase. Thank you for gracing us with your presence. That means thank you for honoring us with your presence. This is a great word to know, friends. We read on here, and in Britain, hats frequently appear at church services and weddings. And depending on what church you go to in the United States or different countries, women still wear hats there, too. That's right. Well, Gabe, have you ever heard of the phrase, off to the race? Rebecca, it's time for us to be off to the races right now. Let's go to the, the info, info cloud. cloud. Hello, 
and welcome to InfoCloud. We have another interesting topic to talk about, and so we're off to the races. What Rex means by this is that we are about to start something exciting. Now, a part of this saying comes from the commentary from racing. When the race starts, it is quite common for the commentator to call out, and they're off, meaning that the race has started. So by saying that you are off to the races, it takes on a sense of starting out or starting a race. But we also use this phrase ironically. When we are being ironic, we use something that means the opposite of what is normal or intended use. So if it takes a long time to get ready to leave for something, or it takes longer than usual to leave, you might hear someone say, and we're off to the races. This doesn't mean that you are necessarily going to do something exciting. It means that you are finally getting somewhere. In a few cases, people use this expression to mean that something is already being worked on or already started. The English department is already off to the races on publishing the new study guides. 任何的竞赛，只要是比速度，像是赛马、游泳、赛车等等，都会令人情绪高涨、意志高昂。今天就要来学一个相关的片语 ：off to the races。off 是展开行动或出发 ，race 是比赛。字面上的意思是开始比赛。在一场比赛中，现场解说员最常说的一句话就是 “they're off”。意思就是比赛开始了。Off to the races 也可以用来表达正在进行中的事情，比如 ，The director is off to the races on filming the new movie。那位导演已经开始电影的拍摄工作。不过，这个片语也可以用来讽刺或是酸别人，例如，有时候一个人要出门，拖拖拉拉的，最后终于可以出门了，你可能就会听到有人说。We're off to the races. 它的意思是，哇，那个速度真是太快了，可以去比赛了。当然，这是在说反话。这就是今天的 Info Cloud。我们下次再见。Welcome back to Studio Classroom, where we are learning about the art of millinery. Actually, specifically today, we're learning about the history of millinery and the history of how people wore hats. Well, we have a lot more to learn, so let's continue. The art of millinery. Queen Elizabeth II has her own milliner and is usually seen wearing a hat when in public. At Harry and Meghan's wedding, royals and non-royals will undoubtedly sport fancy hats. No matter the occasion, a decorative hat is sure to stand out. Thus, one can still find shops. That sell beautiful women's hats and classes that will teach the art of millinery. Millinery can provide an outlet for creative expression, as people design beautiful three-dimensional works of art. Despite its decline in importance, the art of millinery remains alive and well. All right, 继续我们看 despite 这个介系词。Despite 是指不论如何或尽管如此。例如 ，despite her tragic childhood, Molly grew up to be an optimistic and caring person. 尽管有着悲惨的童童年 ，Molly 长大成为了一个乐观又关心他人的人。
或者是 despite some minor problems, this new cell phone has been well received by consumers. 这只新手机虽然有一些小的问题，但是还是很受到消费者欢迎。Despite 和 in spite of 的意思跟用法都差不多。例如 ，We went camping in spite of the bad weather. 虽然天气不佳，我们还是去露营了。最后，我们看 decline 这个名词。第一，这个字首是指向下的 ，c l i n 有弯曲的意思，所以 decline 是指下降或衰退，大多用单数形。如果要说明是哪一方面的衰退或下降的话，是用 in 这个介系词。例如 ，one of the reasons for the decline in the birth rate is the high cost of child care. 托育费用过高是生育率下降的原因之一。Decline 可以当动词，例如 ，the city's crime rate has declined gradually in the last decade. 过去十年来，这个城市的犯罪率已经逐渐下降。And now let's get back to our teachers. All right, now we're learning about Queen Elizabeth. We read Queen Elizabeth the second. Has her own milliner and is usually seen wearing a hat when in public. <laughs> Isn't this cute, Rebecca? <laughs> yes. It, have you seen other pictures of Queen Elizabeth? Hmm. You probably have, right? Well, yes, of course, I've seen other pictures. I feel like she's wearing a hat in every picture, like everywhere she goes, she's got a cool hat on. Well, she does have her own milliner. I'm sure that they're probably all different hats, right? Yeah, she's got a lot of different hats for all of her different outfits. She's one cool lady. Hey, I bet she likes her hats to mount, match her outfit. Yeah, just like you. She probably <laughs> wouldn't be seen wearing a red hat with a green shirt. Unless it was Christmas. <laughs> Unless it's Christmas, <laughs> right. right? All right. Okay. Well, let's move on from here.、Uh, we go to the next sentence. At Harry and Meghan's wedding, royals and non-royals will undoubtedly sport fancy hats, and so of course the Queen will、uh, probably wear something a little, a little special. It's, it's going to be a wedding after all. Right. And during weddings, you need to wear something extra special. But we read: No matter the occasion, a decorative hat is sure to stand out. Well, of course, if you go to a church service or any event and you see someone wearing a decorative hat, they're going to stand out. Or I'd say someone just wearing a hat, period, because so few people wear hats these days. Even if you're wearing a hat, it will stand out. Well, let's take a look at this phrase: to stand out. That means to be noticeable. Because you're different, or because something is so different, everyone notices it. It stands out. Exactly. Here's another way to use this phrase. Now, whenever you go traveling, I think it's very important to put a bright colored string or ribbon on your luggage. Do you know why? So it will stand out, and then you can find it when you go down to the baggage claim. Oh, that is such a good tip, Rebecca, because、mm-hmm. my baggage is just black, so it looks like a lot of other people's suitcases. Maybe I should tie something on it to make it stand out. Right, but it has to be a bright color. Don't tie black to it. <laughs> All right, that's another good tip. <laughs> Okay, so friends, do you have anything that makes you stand out? Well, there are certain things about each of us that make us stand out, right? We continue here. Thus, one can still find shops that sell beautiful women's hats and classes that will teach the art of millinery. Well, there you go, Rebecca. You can take a class for hat making. Yes. This is exactly what, what I wanted. We've always wanted to do. Yes, I've been looking for an outlet. That I can express myself, and it just might be a class in millinery. Hey, well,、uh, you just mentioned a great phrase that we、oh. want to talk about here. Oh, you are so right, <laughs> friends. We read on millinery can provide an outlet for creative expression, as people design beautiful three-dimensional、hmm. works of art. So, an outlet for something that is a way for something to come out. So, if you're creative. And you're trying to find a way to express that creativity. You have an outlet for your creativity. I think everybody needs an outlet for creative expression, right? So millinery can provide that. But if you play an instrument, maybe piano or guitar 
or trumpet or any other instrument. Drums. And, uh, drums. How could I forget drums? Why not? You know, though, all those different instruments can provide an outlet for musical expression. It can also be an outlet for frustration. <laughs> oh, you are right. Are you speaking from experience? <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Sometimes I play when I'm really happy. Sometimes if I'm really stressed, I might also play drums. It's a great outlet uh, for expressing different things. Well, we continue here about millinery. The last sentence says, despite its decline in importance, the art of millinery remains alive and well. And that's just a fun phrase. It means it's still in existence and being used. That's right. So what are some other things that might be alive and well? Oh, this reminds me of Jesus. You know, in the Bible, it mm -hmm. talks about how he died. Mm -hmm. And even though he did die, he rose again three days later, and now he's still alive and well. Oh, he's alive and very well, and that's why we can be too. <laughs> okay, well, friends, we've had a lot of fun talking about hats and the art of hat making, and right now it's time for us to continue with a review, review skit. skit. They are alive and well. Oh, yeah, you bet. Sorry to bother you, but I couldn't help but admire your hat. It's gorgeous. Oh, why, thank you. It is very elaborate, isn't it? It sure is. So where did you buy it? Uh, actually, I didn't buy this hat. I made it myself. Really? You made it? How? Well, I started with a basic hat and decorated it. A decorative hat stands out. It sure does. Do you think I could make a hat as nice as yours? I doubt it, but you could try. You know, the craft of making hats is called millinery. The term come from, comes from the name of the city, Milan. Oh, the Italian city known for its fine goods? Indeed. Hat making has quite a history. I had no idea. It's true. Hats used to be a staple of women's fashion, but now they aren't that common. What happened? Well, during World War II, many women began to work. Elaborate hats got in their way. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, the only time I see decorative hats is at horse races on TV. How true. I wish more women wore hats. Actually, hats are still useful. They protect us against bad weather. Uh, true. Despite its decline, the art of millinery remains alive and well. So what kinds of things can I put on hats? Oh, well, anything from silk flowers to ribbons and feathers, of course. Hmm. I'm going to put all those things on my hat. It will be decorative and elaborate and Bigger and better than yours. I doubt it. Well, you can try. Uh, Gabe, what kind of hat did you find there? Oh, my goodness, Rebecca. Yes! <laughs> there are so many hats <sighs> that looks, I love to wear. It looks like you're ready to go to the circus. Actually, to be in the circus. Uh, to be in the circus, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe I could wear a hat uh, while I'm doing some permaculture. Oh, permaculture. Oh, permaculture, what do you think about that's that? That's what we're going to learn about next time, right here on Studio Classroom. A good friend lasts a lifetime. I am so proud to have you in my life. A good friend lasts a lifetime.